In this presentation, we're going to review some use cases to bring mTrack functionality into mHero for Liberia. Uh, we're going to look at some of the data workflows that we would need to accomplish that. The two main workflows that we're going to be interested in are sending triggered alerts to health workers based on um, reported data, um, disease surveillance data, to DHIS2, and the routine reporting of public health indicators and service delivery statistics by health workers via SMS to DHIS2. Uh, in this, we're adopting the OpenHIE architecture uh, to bring the various systems together. Um, and we begin that with a bit of a dependent use case um, for linking uh, for uh, the two use cases that were mentioned above. Um, this dependent use case is the synchronization of facility data between IRIS and DHIS2. This is both the health facilities as well as the geographic administrative hierarchy that the facilities um, exist uh, within. Uh, what we want to do is to ensure that the uh, facilities that are referenced in IRIS are linked to the enterprise ID or master facility ID um, for the that's used by DHIS2. Um, here we're assuming that DHIS2 is playing the role of the facility registry and has those identifiers um, to share out. Um, in note that not necessarily every facility that's in IRIS will be um, in DHIS2, at least um, at, at the moment I believe DHIS2 only contains health facilities that are reporting um, uh, service delivery or other public health indicators. That doesn't include, for example, the Ministry of Health headquarters, um, which has health workers and therefore is an IRIS, um, but might not be as relevant for being present in DHIS2. So we need to ensure that we have a way to map um, the IRIS facilities into the DHIS2 at least um, in the places where we agree as to what a health facility is in both systems. Um, so in order to, we can do that mapping as a one time, but as new facilities are added, we will need to develop SOPs to ensure that the, the IRIS and DHIS2 linkages remain up to date. Um, the natural place to record the linking or mapping between the, the IRIS and the DHIS2 facilities would be in the interlinked registry, uh, and there are some tools already to assist with that. Um, and I also should note that there might be other systems like labs or supply chains uh, whose definition of a health facility might not be the same as those represented in DHIS2. So as we would go forward with this process, we should review those um, other systems as well. Um, an another thing that we want to ensure that we have is um, a, a place to share uh, the facility types or the uh, services offered by a health facility um, that would be referenced in both IRIS, DHIS2, as well as any other systems um, that would have a need to know the, the type of the facility. Um, in the short term, DHIS2 would play the role of the terminology service um, for this, and as we go forward, we might want to look at something um, more robust and designed um, to be a, a terminology service. So, um, in any case, what we need are, is DHIS2 is acting as a facility registry, um, potentially terminology service uh, as well, and we need the interoperability layer to handle the synchronization of data in the interlinked registry uh, to handle uh, management and recording of the mapping of health facilities across systems. Um, for the standards that are involved, um, we have either the CSD 
or it's updated um, MILR standard for coming from IHE and for the um, terminology such as the facility type we look at the HL7 fire terminology resources um, a lot of what we need to do for this use case the technology is there it's just a matter of deploying it um, in the Liberian context to give you a sense of what this might look like um, in terms of data workflow uh, we've got a sequence diagram here and we see that the interoperability layer loops through um, on a nightly basis um, to begin a, uh, a request to synchronize facility and geographic data coming from DHIS2 into the interlinked registry that's the first box um, and in the second loop box we see that the interoperability layer uh, makes a request to the interlinked registry to update its data, uh, the IRIS facility data, um, and store that into the interlinked registry. Um, so that is a routine process that would happen automatically on a uh, nightly basis or weekly basis, whatever the correct period is. Um, as that happens, um, we would need to develop uh, we would need to have a, a user of the interlinked registry or, or some um, dedicated app that would review the um, facilities from DHIS2 and IRIS for any of the updated facilities to see if there's any potential um, uh, map or linkages between uh, IRIS facility lists and DHIS2 facility lists. Um, and here we would want to use some of the tools which provide statistical li like, statistically likely matches between the facilities to ease that um, data management process. Once we have uh, a synchronization between the IRIS and DHIS2 facilities, we'll, we'll know um, which health workers are uh, working at which facility and um, would be reporting to DHIS2 or potentially receiving a, uh, an alert from DHIS2 based on their catchment areas. So that gets us into our next use case, which is sending a triggered alert to a health worker. Here we want to send an SMS alert to an appropriate cohort, cohort of health workers based on some disease surveillance statistics in DHIS2 that have been reported and approved. Um, and perhaps if uh, it is a suspected um, Ebola or other high priority disease, um, you would want that alert to be sent out um, to a sub cohort of health workers um, uh, um, without the approval process, just to put everybody on alert. Um, so some of the things that we would need in order to uh, get this going are to, to clearly define the trigger conditions, um, including the threshold levels that would cause an, an, alert, an alert to be initiated from um, monitoring the DHIS2 indicators and the reported data elements. So, for example, you could have a threshold of 50 color cases, anything exceeding 50 color cases in a, a district you should send an alert to the nurses in um, that district um, that are working in that district to say, hey, there is an increase in the cholera um, cases. Please be aware and on the lookout for um, um, diarrhea. And here's some updated information about what to do to provide um, care. Um, so since each of the indicators and, and data elements reflect different um, uh, health care, public health conditions and disease surveillance conditions, we're going to make sh we're going to need that different alert messages are written for the trigger conditions, um, as well as potentially to the various cohorts that we want defined for those trigger conditions. Um, and so we do need to define exactly who those that cohort is? Is it based on the health worker deployment data? So they are deployed in a county. Is it um, based on a contact group of specific health workers that receive um, 
these messages. Uh, so uh, is it dependent on the cadres of the health workers? So for each of these tr trigger conditions, we need to have these information defined and determined. Um, and we would also want to include to have some sense of what the analysis and uh, reporting requirements for monitoring the alerting functionality to know do we uh, how many alerts were sent to validate that the we did get a response from the health worker um, so we do need to have some sense of what that reporting and analysis is going to be uh, for the systems involved, um, the um, we have obviously DHIS2, which has the indicator and data element information. We have the interlinked registry and um, health worker registry and facility registry, which has the information about the um, the cohorts of the health workers and their deployment data that we're interested in, and um, we would use the interoperability layer as a way to uh, monitor the the data reported at DHIS2 to, to evaluate what those the thresholds were met um, or exceeded for those trigger conditions. Some standards that we have here are the CSD, MCSD standards that we were using for the health worker and facility information as well as a standard called Mobile Alert Communication Management, or MACM, um, which defines how alerts should be sent out. Um, to look at what the data flow is here, um, note that we do have a precondition that uh, the first UK use case that we'd mentioned, the facility mapping between IRIS and DHIS2, has been performed. Um, now we loop over all of the trigger conditions that we have for um, uh, indicators or data elements um, and we look at the requested the indicator data from DHIS2 um, currently that's going to be need to be in the DXF proprietary DHIS2 format but as we evolve um, the ADX standard um, uh, which is going through a rewrite price process right now, we would probably want to update that to the ADX standard. Um, and we get, a, anyways, we make that request for the information, we get the list of indicators back, we determine if any of the indicators exceed the threshold levels. Um, and if so, then we request the IDs of the health workers that are um, in the defined cohort for receiving the alert, um, and this is coming from the interlinked registry, which is fed from IRIS, or, um, and then once we have the ID, we can send the uh, alert message to that health worker via mHERO in the MACM standard. Um, at a later point, uh, an administrator can go back and review the alerts sent just to monitor that everything is going well. The third use case is the ability to report the public health indicators to DHIS2 um, via SMS. Um, and this is primarily uh, considering the routine indicators, um, so the ones that would have monthly or quarterly or annual reporting, um, potentially weekly reporting as well. Um, in order to make this work, we would need a reporting format for each indicator defined um, that we want to collect. So this could either be via a structured SMS or a set of query and response um, SMS messages, uh, depending on um, the, the indicators that we're interested in and the complexity of them. Um, we also need to define the cohort of health workers who are involved in um, reporting each of the, the indicators that we're interested in. Um, we need to associate users of DHIS2, um, in particular the ones that are the reporting health workers, um, with the um, 
user with the the records in iris in the health worker registry um, this can be done by exporting the user data from dhis2 into the interlinked registry and, and handling the, the mapping there this there is already support for this um, uh, the export of dhis2 users into the interlinked registry um, currently there isn't a, a good mapping between uh, tools in place to to map the um, DHIS2 users to um, health workers in the interlinked registry. Um, so that will need to be considered as if this gets rolled out. Um, now the next is that we need the scopes uh, standard operating procedures for the validation and follow-up of reported indicators and um, minder, reminders on on missed reports, um, so so that uh, we can use the same um, SMS uh, workflow um, with M Hero to both receive the 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 reported data as well as indicate if there is any issues with it what was received. Um, the main systems involved here are the Health Worker Registry or Interlinked Registry and DHIS2 as well as mHero. Um, the standard for reporting the indicator data is um, is either the proprietary DXF format or the ADX format um, and we use the CSD or MCSD standards for health worker and health facility data. Looking at what that might mean in terms of systems, we have a health worker um, sending in the weekly or monthly SMS report um, that gets received by Rapid Pro, um, which is a part of M Hero. Um, Rapid Pro, upon receiving that alert, calls a webhook. Um, which sends the data to the interoperability layer. The interoperability layer is going to be responsible for extracting the contact ID from Rapid Pro um, and looking up the health worker in the health worker registry and associating that with a user in DHIS2. The interoperability layer then can restructure the data that it received from Rapid Pro um, to generate either the DXF or ADX message to send to DHIS2 with the indicator or data element value, the, the user ID, um, and the uh, associated org unit. Um, whether that org unit was indicated in the, the original SMS message or inferred from the deployment um, data um, for the health worker. Once we have a successful um, submission from DHIS2, we get acknowledgement back um, and um, indicate to the health worker that we did receive a, a successful submission by sending, optionally sending out an, an additional SMS alert to that health worker. 